In this session of PV Apps for Ed, we're going to take a look at Schoology resources. In Schoology, there are four types of resources that you'll have. Personal, public, group, and apps. Let's take a look first at personal resources and what this means. So when I'm creating a Schoology course, I'm uploading what um, Schoology refers to as resources onto all of my courses. This includes links, files, videos, pictures, whatever you put on a course is also a resource. You can take an entire course or each individual piece of an entire course and save it to your Schoology apps for later use again. So let's say I teach the PV Apps for Education course, but I know as I teach this course it's going to change over the years. Um, but I want to be able to reuse as much of it as I possibly can. So what I can do is save all those resources from that class into my personal resources. As you see right here, it comes in as a folder, and when I click into it, I'll see all of the resources from that particular course. If I go back over to the PV Apps for Ed class, or course, you can see that I have an options button at the top and that's where I'll be able to save this course to my resources and choose a location or I could go in and save just this folder to my course or last but certainly not least I could save an individual piece to my resources so I want to save this link to my resources and I can go to that cog and save to my personal resources. Then I can use that to link to a later version of the class or a completely different class if I know it has um, related content. It's essentially like saving all of your content on your computer, but you save it on Schoology's computer instead of your own. It's a nice little backup system that Schoology allows you to use for free with your um, Schoology account to back up your courses and back up your materials so they never get lost. So what I like to do is save my course materials on my computer. I like to save them on my Schoology course as well as in my resources. And then I also save them a third place. I tend to save them in Google Drive as well because with our Google Apps for Ed, we have unlimited storage. So I like to save those a third place just to have a, be really sure that I kind of have all my backups in place. But that's just me. I would definitely encourage you to save all the things that you put in Schoology onto your Schoology resources as well as onto your courses just so you at least have one backup in place. So that's personal resources. There are also public resources which are really nice because they're shared resources between you and all of the Schoology community. You can choose to make your personal resources also a public resource that other people can take and add to their Schoology courses or share on their groups. So if I'm about to teach an Algebra 1 lesson on variables, I could come to the public resources and type in Algebra Variables. And that's pretty broad, so I'll get a wide variety of resources, I'm sure. But you can see I have lots of different resources available, available to me. Some folders, some documents, some links. Lots of different stuff that I can use to link to my course once I find something that really fits my criteria. So public resources are just like private or personal resources, all only they're shared amongst the entire Schoology community. Then there are group resources, which are, sh are shared resources among the groups that you belong to. So I can share a group to, or I can share a resource, sorry, to any of these groups that I belong to. And last but not least are apps. This isn't really a storehouse for you as much as the other resource sections are as much as it is a place where you can connect your outside applications to Schoology to get to 
your resources. A good example of this would be Google Drive. Like I said in the personal section, personal resources section, I store all of my things on Google Drive as well as on Schoology. So I can get to my Google Drive um, stored documents from Schoology because those two are connected. If I want to install a new app like Google Drive, I go to Install Apps here, and the list of uninstalled apps will be here. I can connect a Dropbox account. I'll just select that, select Install App, go ahead and log in. Once I've selected that, it'll populate a page, tell me that I'm not currently logged in, I need to approve it and then I need to authorize by logging in here. I'm not going to do that, but I would log in and then I'll have all my Dropbox resources available here, just like you saw with my Google Drive, or I can do the same thing for YouTube or any of those other approved apps that you see in the list. When I want to remove an app, I can just go to this carrot here and uninstall if I no longer want that to be a connected app. So there's lots of ways to store your resources and get to them in Schoology. I can have personal, my own resources, public, shared resources, group resources amongst my groups that I belong to, or I could install apps to get to my third-party resources. So Schoology allows you a lot of flexibility with the different kinds of resources that you have and things that you can link to your courses or groups. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something. Thanks for watching.